Hello, hello, and happy middle of the week. This seems a little off today. Does it look a little off? Um, I have just been kind of thinking about something um, that I thought I would jump on and share. I've shared it with, um, I actually was shared um, by one of my accountability partners, and um, I thought I would, and I've shared it with several people now, and every single person I've shared it with, it's been kind of an aha moment for them, so I thought, Maybe it'll be an aha moment for somebody um, on a Facebook Live. So thought I'd come at you and share it with you. So the question really is, who's your kid's hero? Um, growing up, I would say that my dad was my hero. Um, just awesome guy, um, loved Jesus, uh, was a school teacher that everybody loved, coached basketball, he was my hero. And um, I was definitely um, constantly looking for his approval and wanting him to praise me. And, and um, every time I brought home good grades, it was, he was elated for me. And, um, and he was my hero. And I often think about it um, now that I'm an adult raising kids. I want my kids to think I'm their hero. <laughs> I want my kids to think I'm the bomb, right? Especially my teenager. Like, I want her to think I'm a cool mom and want to hang out with me and all of that. And um, and then my girlfriend said something to me that was such an eye-opener. And I have really, really spent um, a lot of time in prayer about it, really thinking about it. So um, if you, I, I mentioned yesterday in a post too, and I'm going to say it today, if you claim Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is for you. Um, if you're not there yet, if you're still trying to figure out um, who God is and all of that, this may not pertain to you. But but for those of you who have kids that you're in the middle of raising, you're doing that whole rat race thing right now, and, um, and, uh, and you claim Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you're raising your kids to love Jesus, then this may be for you. But I really want you to think about when you think about your kids, especially if you have preteens or, or early teens, um, who are their heroes? Right now with my little one, I think um, she just <laughs> she's just a happy-go-lucky kid, fly by the seat of her pants kind of kid, and she's just happy. And, and, and I don't think that um, it's a real thought process for her yet, so it's great that um, I'm able to start thinking about this and start working with her. My 14-year-old, I'm diving into this a ton. We've been spending a lot of time talking about it. Um, a lot of times we want to be our kid's hero. We want to give them validation. We want to give them approval. Um, and really deep down, this is such an incredible concept. And guys, I've screwed this up. Um, Mike and I have made some major changing in our parenting, and that's why I'm sharing this with you. Um, really look at it and go, Jesus needs to be my kid's hero. At the end of the day, that's it. Jesus needs to be the hero. I need to continuously point my kid to Jesus and not worry about my validation and my approval. It is between my daughters and Jesus. It, so let's take Hannah specifically, my oldest, who's 14. I have really worked on changing my verbiage. How easy is it, is it when to, for us to say when they bring home great grades, I'm so proud of you. You were so great. You did such a great job. I just, I, I'm so proud of you. Let's go get ice cream because you did so great on those grades. Or, um, you know, just I think it's a natural reaction for parents to say, I'm so proud of you. But what if we flip that? and ask them, are you proud of yourself? How did those grades make you feel? How did that decision make you feel? So grades are an easy one. I think it's a great way to start with my, with, with Sophia, my younger one. Um, she's been doing this cheer thing. She has gotten the cheer bug, let me tell ya. And, um, and so she's been doing cheer two days a week and she comes home from cheer and she's like, I learned this and I learned that. And, and, and so, and I want to say everything in my being wants to say, I'm so proud of you. And I am, I'm crazy proud of her that she's found something that she She's excited about loves and is excelling at crazy proud about that but I want to know how that makes her feel how does working hard two days a week at her cheer clinic making her feel how is that edifying her inside and in the end how is that helping her relationship with Christ let's take it a step further when you've got a teen 
teens are making, my, my kid is making huge decisions on the daily. I mean, and I say that because I have a teen. Like, doesn't that sound so teenagerous? On the daily, because she says on the daily. Do you also hear like, oh, same, same. Like, I'm hearing that a whole lot around my house. But anyway, I digress. Do you ever um, like sit down with your kid, your, if you have a preteen or a teen, and start talking about what's going on? So yesterday, um, I'm just gonna give you a real great example. Um, Hannah uh, was sitting at the dinner table and sharing with us um, about all the kids that are vaping and not naming names, not throwing kids under the bus, just talking about um, the kids that are vaping in the bathroom. And she's like, mom, it's the craziest thing. We have a male security guard and a female security guard in every building on both levels because so they've got a bunch of buildings at the school it's like a small city at the school and there's two levels at each in each building and so what she's saying is there are four security guards in every single building there's security guards outside um, and she's like you know if a security guard walks in the bathroom those girls are gonna be in so much trouble and I said to her so how does that make you feel like when you walk in and see that she goes she says, it makes me feel sad that they're vaping. And I'm like, why is that? And she goes, because it's terrible for them. I mean, this is my black and white kid. Like, I, I, I'm not, I am not claiming this as my great parenting at all because my other one, she'll probably be the one. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Anyway, so it, it was interesting to talk, to, talk through this with her. And um, I've learned to stop talking and let her talk, which is extremely difficult for me. But she says to me, she goes, it's so bad for them. And, and I go, I go, yeah, it is. And I said, why do you think that they do that? And she's all, I think that they think that they're cool and that they're trying to be cool with other people. And I'm like, so how does it make you feel that you are vaping you? And she's like, I don't even know why I would do that, mom. Because at the end of the day, I really, really want people to see Jesus in me. Like, to me, that is, you guys, the biggest win ever. When my kid can say to me, I want people to see Jesus in me. She doesn't care what I think about what she's doing. I mean, I'm sure she probably does it at, at some level because she's still a kid. But she cares about how she is representing Jesus. I used to say all the time, I want uh, you to be respectful because you are representing the Lindberghs. You are a Lindbergh. You do that because you're a Lindbergh. And I've changed that verbiage. You do that because you're a child of God. You do that because you're made in his image. So we've changed our verbiage. Just something to think about. Asking your kids, how does that make you feel? Are you proud of yourself? How do you think Jesus sees that? Just changing our verbiage with our kids can change their future. And I think one day I'm gonna be gone. If, 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 all, if all goes the way that it's supposed to go, Mike and I are gonna be gone way before our kids. I don't want my kids to find their hero in me. I need them to find their hero in Jesus because he's their constant. He is the one that will validate them. He is the one that will approve them. It's between their Hannah's heart and Sophia's heart and Jesus. That's what it's about. I screw up every single day on the daily. La yesterday, I'm going to give you a perfect example. Mike, we made tacos last night for dinner, and Mike was mashing up the avocado. And my girls love avocado, um, and we call it God's fat, right? I like it's God's fat avocado. And Hannah was sticking her finger in it, licking the finger, and then sticking her finger back in it. And I was sitting at our bar watching this happen. And my earthly crappy response that I had to do a round and apologize for was, "Get your freaking finger out of that bowl! What is your problem?" <laughs> and even Mike looked at me and goes, "Seriously?" What is your deal? And I had to step back and go, this is why I should never be your hero. I screw up every single day. I let anger come in like that every single day. And I had to, Sophia was sitting right here. Hannah's stick her finger in the, in the avocado. Mike is heating up tortillas. 
and I had to go, you guys, I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. That is anger and I am, I am so sorry. And I'm like, but really, Hannah, please don't put your finger in the, gua in the, in the avocado. We're all going to eat that. That's gross. That's the way that I should have handled it. But again, my point to this is I screw up every day. I don't want my kids to see me as their hero. They need to see Jesus as their hero. Mike and I are doing our very, very best to raise great kids who are respectful and kind. But dang it, I want my kid to be so much better than me. I want my kid to rise so much further above what I have done. I hope that she makes great decisions for her life to edify Jesus in what Ever she decides to do and that is between her and Jesus not me I am raising my kids from a place of trust not from a place of fear from a place of deep deep love a place of trust I am going to raise them to trust Jesus trust their decisions are they gonna fail heck yeah they're gonna fail they're gonna screw up over and over I'm hoping that Mike and I can sort of soften the blow and be there to talk through it, pray through it, figure out what the consequences are. Trust me, my kids are a wreck and a half half the time and they and they get and they have consequences for poor choices and poor decisions. We're not just raising crazy kids. I promise you that. We have rules. They have to make their bed every single day. <laughs> we have all of that, but we're really really working hard at raising them from a place of trust. Jesus instilled in us to be the parents of Hannah and Sophia. And we are trusting that he gave them to us on loan for this short time. So we're trusting that, that we're doing a great job. We're praying over them. We're praying for them daily, every single day. And so raising them from a place of trust and, uh, and teaching them that Jesus needs to be their hero. That's what it's all about. So that's what I have for you today. I hope that somebody gains something out of this. I would love to hear if you sit down tonight at dinner and you ask your kids, so who's your hero? I'd love to hear what their response is. Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye.